I don't suppose it will be the end of the matter, but I think um, Humza Yusuf acquitted himself very well on BBC this morning, explaining uh, two things. Number one, that uh, the person who he was interceding for, uh, the Pakistani consulate, during the uh, at the time when the gay marriage vote um, uh, was reaching its final hurdle, the reason why he missed the gay marriage vote uh, to help the life of Mohammed Ashgar, he confirmed that Mohammed Ashgar was in fact released as a result of his intercession. Tremendous achievement. And, you know, we, we, we should have known that from the very beginning. It's a shame that wasn't known. It's a shame the uh, various press and journalists didn't do their job and didn't tell us the answer to that. It fell to Humza Yusuf to reveal that today. I'm delighted to hear that. That's number one. And number two, Humza Yusuf also pointed out that um, the person who's been whipping up this story is Alex Neal, who supports a different candidate. Humza is scrupulous in trying to avoid throwing mud around. Uh, there's a third point here, and the third point is that the um, during the progress of the gay marriage bill, Humza is on record as voting for it in the first reading. That's significant. So if um, he had religious scruples or if there was uh, pressure from the mosques for him not to vote, that certainly didn't stop him expressing confidence in the bill as it starts. So in other words, uh, scotching the entire issue that uh, it was some sort of religious prejudice which got in the way of him doing his civic duty. So he then goes on to make a further case that should the uh, that should the um, uh, should the first minister uh, be a person who disapproves of this bill and wants to revise it, he he's very clear. No, the First Minister is to be the guardian of the achievements already made. So, uh, yes, it's ambiguous. Would, would he be a person who would have put forward the gay marriage vote? He doesn't answer that question, but that is a hypothetical. Uh, but it's quite clear that some of his rivals would try to change the law if they had that opportunity. He's clear that he wouldn't. That, I think, is very satisfying. The same sort of questions, I think, should be asked in, um, in the Westminster Parliament. Would a future Prime Minister, would a future Parliament guarantee to keep the liberties that we've won? Now, uh, for, for myself, I would like to see Brexit rolled back. But I think the, uh, the core principle in today's world is not to mess around with constitutional problems. That constitutional problem has now been passed. Our job isn't to roll Brexit back and to go back to the past. Our job is to go forward into the future and to make Brexit work. I think to make Brexit work properly, we need to have as close a relationship with Europe and with the United States and with our national friends as possible. That may mean that we need to set up new alliances. We should get up and do that as fast as possible. We deal with the reality we have, not with the reality we want or the reality that we had in the past. We deal with the reality we've got now. I need to feed the cat.